Hey everyone, welcome to South Metro Fire Station 22. I'm Lieutenant Chris Phipps. And I'm Engineer Steve Allred. And this is Fleet Friday. Today we're gonna to go over two of the specialty equipment that we cross staff, Brush 22 and Fan 3. Metro Fire, what is the address of the emergency? What's on fire? Multiple calls reporting planes coming from the roof. LPDs arriving on scene stating fire in the stairwells as well. Multiple callers, complaints seen coming out of the unit. Hustle parties trapped, but there's an older lady that lives there. She is not seen. So this is our brush truck here at station 22. It's a 2016 F550 4x4 and it's actually powered by a gas engine versus a diesel engine. It was purchased before the merge by Cunningham Fire. So it was kind of one of the transition rigs that we had. They went with the quad cab for the sole purpose of having it be able to be deployed as an re independent resource for wildland fires for mutual aid departments in state. Give you a quick look at the cab here. So the four wheel drive is a manual shift and also a manual hub lock on the outside. It'll be your standard truck configuration inside with an automatic transmission. Uh, inside we'll have a full full control for the driver of all the emergency warning systems so you'll have your emergency master switch here and the other big thing that they have to remember when they're driving this is the the front bumper sweep valve switch is right here and that'll control the the bumper line up front okay so you have your full radio your full MDT let's take a look at the first compartment So in here we have what they call some portable water packs. And this is so if somebody can put this on their back and it's basically like a big backpack super soaker. So they can find the hot spots and, and be a little more mobile on foot and a little faster. We have extra, extra foam, some deployment shelters, a gear bag with a couple of helmets inside it full complement first aid kit and also in this compartment and again on identical on the other side it's got an electric rewind so that we can get the hose put away faster in this compartment we have a extra complement of various wildland hose in case we have a burst section or need to extend the line even further some extra drinking water and Gatorade. And here we have our tool compartment and each type of thing that we might need for a wildland deployment tool wise is in these various containers. We have an extra 10 foot section of two and a half hose so that we can refill at a hydrant. Uh, this device would be our hose winder and then we also have tire chains if it needs to be used as a medical vehicle in the winter time for blizzards so this is the back of the truck where our, our fire pump is located uh, as far as water capacity it's got a 250 gallon tank which is here in addition to that, it also has a 20 gallon pre-plumbed foam tank of Class A foam. And all of it can be deployed out of the various nozzles and hose off the pump here. At the, at the end of the tour, we'll do a demonstration of flowing the, the spray, uh, spray bars up front. In this compartment here, we have a special kind of hose, and this is called drafting hose. 
in case we get somewhere where we don't have any kind of water supply we have to use a, a static water supply source which could be a, a pond or a ditch an irrigation ditch or anything like that on this side we have 200 feet of inch and a half wildland line and this can be an, an anchor line for either side of the truck that close back up I'll come around okay in this compartment we have our chainsaw in case we have to cut any trees down in this bag we have special chaps that can go over a person's pants that give a little bit of, of cut protection from the chainsaw. In this compartment we have various wildland tools. We have some shovels, some Pulaski's and alien tools. one that was kind of a, a custom made cut tool by the guys at Cunningham before the South Metro merge and it just kind of helps to clear those deep rooted plants a little faster over here is what they call a progressive pack so I, I can't pull all the hose out but I can open it up and let you see so we have a hundred feet of inch and a half what they call a trunk line to a gated Y at the bottom and then one inch wildland line up top and we're, we're able to walk away from the truck by connecting here and we can connect multiple packs together if it's a, a long hose lay away for where the fire is in this compartment we have Three more identical progressive packs, which you saw in this last one. Three wildland helmets with equipped with helmet lights for night ops, and two more emergency shelters. And again, there's another electric hose reel rewind for the 100 foot reel that we have up top, and that will allow us to do what they call a mobile attack. So we can drive the same time a firefighter is spraying water. Another view of the back of the cab so you can see how much room we have. So a crew of four can fit in here comfortably anytime we're deployed or go on a brush fire. So this is the fire pump on, our, on brush 22 that allows me to get water to all the various hose lines and as well as foam. So I'll give you a quick demonstration on how we start that up and, and get water to our, bu our bumper sway bars. So very quick pump to start. Now we'll go around front and I'll show you how to get water to the bumper. So here's that, that master sweet valve switch that we talked about in the beginning. So we'll flip that, we'll go out front and water will come up. What this will allow us to do is kind of drive into a burned out area and make sure that we're not putting the brush truck in danger. We can also use it as a to make an escape route for ourselves. Okay, and the last piece of equipment I want to show you guys is up front on the bumper here. We have a worn 12,000 pound cable winch. And what this is going to allow us to do, if, if for whatever reason we do get the vehicle stuck, we could pull ourselves out, we could pull other vehicles out, and we're, it also allows us to move uh, fallen timber, fallen trees that might have come across our path, so we can drag them out of the way with the winch. Hey everyone, so I'm going to tell you about the other piece of specialty equipment we have here at Station 22, and that's what we affectionately know as the BFF or Fan 3. 
So Fan 3 is built by SuperVac. It's a BFF 502. And really, it, it, it's built for one purpose, but it does that purpose really, really well. We use Fan 3 to pressurize and to ventilate large, uncompartmentalized commercial structures. And what I mean by that is think of the biggest building in, in your district, whatever that is. Um, something near your house, a commercial structure. We can bring Fan 3 in and we can pressurize that building and we can get all the smoke and all the hazardous products from combustion out of that building. And what that really does for our citizens and what that does for those business owners is it lets them open back up their business. All right, everyone. So we're gonna go through a little bit of what we have on the trailer and how it's all set up. So we'll start here with the motor. It's a Chevy motor and it produces 580 horsepower. So it's very, very, very powerful, but we need it to be able to move all the air that we're gonna move and ventilate those buildings. This box right here, it looks kind of like there would be equipment in here, but this is actually the fuel tank for this motor. So we can fill this up with fuel. It can run for a very, very long time if it needs to be. You guys notice some of the piping here. We actually, what we do is we run this piping so that the exhaust of the motor is away from the fan. What we don't want to do is have this motor putting out all this exhaust, all these hazardous products, and then just pushing those products back into the building we're trying to ventilate. So we can hook all these pipes up together, we can run the exhaust a good ways away, and that way we're not pushing it back into the building we're trying to ventilate. So this is the equipment cabinet for fan three. There's really not much in here. So we have the batteries in here. We have some ear protection. Um, we've got some other little miscellaneous cleaning tools and things we can use to put more oil. We've got some safety cones and then we've got the manuals for it if we need to troubleshoot it on scene. Very, very simple control panel here for fan three. So we've got fuel, the battery voltage, the oil, and the temp of the motor. Um, ignition right here. This is the RPMs. Fan 3 is most efficient, so it moves that most 750,000 CFM at 2,500 RPMs. Because it's got carbon fiber blades on it, it can't go past 4,000. The motor will take it past 4,000, but we risk a catastrophic failure of the blades if we go past 4,000. So we even put it in here in big bold letters so we don't forget. Max RPM is 4,000. We've got some warning lights so that we know people don't get too close to it, some spotlights, we can light up what we're doing, and uh, some front front lights. And then this is the go ignition button right here. So step one, we're gonna turn it on, let the motor fire up a little bit, and we're gonna start it up. thing I want to show you real quick right down here this is how we adjust it so right now we're at about a thousand rpm we're gonna turn it up There we go. And that's fan three. Thanks for coming out and visiting station 22. That was brush 22 and fan three. We'll see you guys again next time.